Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 4th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week I mentioned a post by Didi about Malware Bazaar, the site where you can download malicious samples now. They, of course, encrypt those samples before you download them in order to not trip any kind of anti-malware, but also to sort of protect the innocent here. Little problem with the format of encryption they used. The SIP encrypted files that they're offering are encrypted using the AES algorithm. Nothing really special about AES, the advanced encryption standard, very well established and good encryption algorithm. But what it means is that in Python, the normal zip file module is not able to decrypt them. And that affected a lot of DDA's tools. So he's now switching over to PySipper, another uh, zip library for Python. And that one is able to deal with AES encrypted files. And Friday, I mentioned a vulnerability in the infrastructure automation suite, Salt Stack. Well, I also mentioned that it's probably not that hard to come up with an exploit for this vulnerability. And sadly, well, I probably underestimated the severity here somewhat because over the weekend, a number of sites were hit using this vulnerability. One of the most famous examples and a link to their status page is the ghost blogging platform. But a number of organizations are reporting active exploitation of this vulnerability and at least scans for vulnerable systems. So if you haven't upgraded yet, this is something that you really have to do today if your salt server is exposed to the internet. And then again, rethink whether or not you can really hide your salt server a little bit better behind some firewall and not expose it directly to the internet. And as you patch these systems, also make sure that they have not already been compromised. Now, luckily, some of the compromise that I've seen being reported, uh, they just trying to install a crypto coin miner. And well, uh, that's usually then just resulting in a denial of service attack due to uh, the load on the server. But uh, don't really just believe that if you find a crypto coin miner installed, that this was the only attack against the system. There may have been other attacks that, of course, you know, left other uh, back doors or such behind. And researchers at Checkpoint wrote a blog about a pretty interesting incident they worked. In this incident, 75% of a company's Android devices were compromised using the Cerberus information stealer. Now, the Cerberus information stealer, it's bad software. It uh, steals passwords and a bunch of other stuff from devices. But that's not really the interesting part here, I find. Uh, That malware has been known for quite a while. What's sort of interesting is how uh, that malware got on to these devices. Now, with Android devices, of course, one suspect is always that a user downloaded some application from outside the Google Play Store. These devices were under control of mobile device management, which of course prevents exactly this from happening and allows uh, the, the corporation to centrally manage which applications are installed on the device. But this turned out to be actually the Achilles heel here. The mobile device management server was compromised and the attacker then just used that mobile device management system to install the malicious software on company devices. Just like any infrastructure that you're using to manage your systems, whether that's salt stack or whether that's your mobile device manager, they need to be well protected. They hopefully are using two-factor authentication. And if at all possible, you will limit what IP addresses can access the system, if possible, just IP addresses within the local administrative network. Of course, the later is difficult if you're working with a cloud-based uh, MDM that's not on-premise, then the vendor that runs the mobile device management system would have to provide that kind of access control, which, well, of course, doesn't really work. 
So in that case, two-factor authentication is probably your best bet. In this particular case, the company had to factory reset all enrolled devices and then essentially reinstall all software on them, which of course is, in particular for a larger company like this, a pretty big effort. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.